The Action Markers Diadem is a large, bulbous piece of outdated paintball technology which some of you have probably never heard of. But that's okay. Those of you who do know it, go ahead and pat yourselves on the back for dedicating brain space, keeping this gun's existence in your memory. When I take the field, I'm determined to have I'm a good never heard of called the Diadem. Got a big fat ass and a ton of sass. And if I take the field with it, you're probably gonna win. Action Markers were an American manufacturer of paintball guns that were around from 1990-something to 2005. They were one of those fringe companies, like Aero Precision or NXE. They were around and might have had solid products, but they never got much attention, like the Neo Geo Pocket Color of the paintball world. I personally never saw anybody using an Action Markers gun when they were around, and I don't think I've ever run into anybody using one, ever. I know some fields use them as rentals because every once in a while some crusty ex-rental sentinels with leaky valves pop up on eBay. So why am I reviewing this thing? Well, look at it! Just, just look at it! Check out that fade anno. That side milling really cements this as an upmarket gun. For the style conscious shooter. The partial clear grip frame, probably inspired by the Game Boy, exists so that you can see all the amazing technology packed inside. Don't forget to throw in some exposed hoses and a blade trigger. It's a perfect little time capsule of the paintball industry in 2004. It's a sprinkle of futuristic design mixed with archaic holdovers from a bygone era, like no clamping feed neck. O-rings do the trick just fine. Those lever lock feed necks are too expensive for a $600 gun. Throwaway stock barrel. This is a fine barrel. A 12 inch one piece really says quality. And a lack of an ASA from the factory. And no need to include one of these. They probably have several already. It's a faster type design that works similar to the Diablo Wrath or Dangerous Power Fusion, but far larger and more expensive. It predates those guns by only a matter of months, and I wouldn't say its on-field performance exactly exceeds either one of them either. It's electronic and has eyes, but the eyes can't be toggled on or off at will, only through the gun's programming mode. They are either preset to be on or off. From the factory, Action Markers decided not to put an in-house HPR on the gun. They outfitted the diadem with a center flag high-pressure regulator. Three years later, Infinity would pull a similar move with their faster gun, the Legend, which came stock with a custom products HPR. If you've stumbled across this video and were wondering if this gun is some obscure but awesome shooting sleeper gun, well, I'm sorry, uh, it isn't. I don't think it shoots particularly well. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not great. Even compared to the other electronic pop it valve guns sold in 2004 like Impulses, Bushmasters, and Vikings. Maybe that has to do with the lack of an LPR out of the box. When the Diadem was launched, Action Markers released a promo video that attempted to show how fast it could shoot without breaking paint. So they broke out their Canon PowerShot point-and-shoot camera and made a crappy video of the gun shooting paint plenty fast, but they never chronoed it to prove it was shooting up to speed, nor did they mention that the gun was modified with an aftermarket LPR, thereby changing the gun's performance over a stock diadem. If the purpose of the video is to show people how good their new gun is, why not shoot it how it actually comes from the factory? I don't care if it's easy to add an LPR, if it's so easy, then why didn't they do it themselves? Yes, it did manage to shoot 2,000 paintballs at unknown velocity without chopping any, but who knows how brittle or not brittle the paint was, and what does that really say about the gun? Not much, actually. I'm sure there's a way to change it, but currently the gun is stuck in some sort of true semi-hell where it simply will not shoot faster than about 10 BPS semi-auto. That's fine for the type of game I typically play. I wouldn't blame my performance on what gun I use anyways, I'm no pro or anything. It's all just for fun with me and that's how I like it. It keeps me from getting burnt out on paintball. These smart parts drop fours are obnoxious because they're angled downward like they're made to be used with CO2. For anyone who doesn't know, a lot of lower end guns have air source adapters that are tilted down to try to prevent some liquid CO2 from entering the gun, but it only kind of works. And at the same time, the ASA is tilted in a manner that makes shouldering the gun tall, ungainly, and uncomfortable. Also, this gun can't use CO2, so why did whoever owned this gun in the past put this horrible drop forward on here? I'm not going to blame my poor performance with this gun on the drop forward, but it certainly didn't help this gun's ergonomics. Then, during my last game with the Diadem, it randomly powered off on me. I don't know why this happened, as the battery was brand new at, at the start of the day, and I couldn't replicate it, but oh well. My team managed to win without me doing anything for most of the game, so I guess it didn't matter. That was the only game I didn't get shot while using the Diadem. Maybe it was trying to save me. Action Markers themselves went out of business a year after this gun came out. They got a cease and desist order from K2, owners of Brass Eagle JT, WGP, and Viewloader. 
saying that their illusion infringed on some of the WGP patents they owned. They went on a long rant about how big bad guy WGP was driving out the little guy and took many a passive aggressive jabs at how WGP guns were outdated and it came off as a bitter long-winded rant. Action Markers was likely going out of business already without the K2 lawsuit as the diadem flopped on the marketplace, and sales of their other guns were never too high to begin with. They just wanted to retaliate against K2 for rubbing salt in Action Markers' wounds. Big thanks to Skylar once again for donating this gun for a review. He also sent me the Vanguard Creed. He's been extra patient and allowed me all the time I needed to get the required footage to film these two reviews. I was originally going to buy these two guns myself for the purpose of reviewing them, but thanks to him I got to have them for a little while anyways, and I didn't even have to buy them. I always appreciate people who let me review their stuff, and I've got more reviews in the pipeline as always. See you guys out on the field. Was that it? Yeah, thank you. God damn it, my gun went fucking down.